Hey, hey you, yes you that is watching this video. Do you ever want to play a RimWorld experience that might possibly break your heart? Break your will? Break your reasoning beyond all hope? Do you want to extend how far you can go with mods? And more importantly, do you want to run a colony that has over 100 colonists in it? Right on the start? No? Hmm, I would not be surprised. As I browsed through the internet, I found that it was actually rather difficult to find any that did that. Alright, so what we're going to need to do, I don't know why no one's bringing the wood in, but what we're going to do, we're going to need to start uh, putting some, okay, someone's gone on a tantrum. But aside from that, there are no real let's plays of such large scale invasions. And there's a real good reason for that. But if you are truly interested in trying to play like this, you might want to take a couple of pieces of notes from this scrapbook here. Who knows, maybe you'll learn a couple of things that you might have never known that you needed. Which can apply to both large scale colonies and small scale colonies. Now before we get into our little story of adventure and heartache, let us first announce the rules that have been set in this video. I was about to do a walkthrough of all the rules, but I realize it's going to take a long time before any of this gets done and my PC is actually suffering right now. So instead, I'll just leave the list here. Feel free to pause and take a look at it closely. The reason for these rules is to add entertainment value. You can apply these rules to yourself if you'd like to try this challenge. It is quite a bit of fun. But anyways, without further ado, let's get to the main meat of the project. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the let's play of EPIC MODERN MONTAGE! Chapter 1 Enjoy. Alright everyone, first things first. I know that how long this kind of thing can take, usually the beginning part is usually the boring part. Let's hope this is different. And usually it's very time consuming, so new colony. Now we got a vast number of things we could do. There are uh, snake people, horse people, droid people, uh, rich explorer. Oh wait, that's the, that's the vanilla stuff right there. Yeah. There are all kinds of different ones, but there is one I'm gonna play usually that you can't, you know, actually see naturally spawn in the world. And that is the Synthetic Dawn, which is basically synthetics. They are a synthetic people that are supposedly made in the glitter world to, you know, do all the things that everyone else doesn't want to do. You know, pretty little housemaids and butlers of a sort. Now, here's the thing though. I'm not going to play with this. I'm going to actually create my own scenario using Naked Brutality. Why? Because I can! This way, I remove any of the resources I actually could have started out with, which makes things a whole lot more difficult. See where I'm getting at here? I'm trying to make my life miserable in a way. For your entertainment. You're welcome. Now, while I could start out with a village of my people, the truth is I can't feed that many of my own people. Not really with what I'm limited to. I'm allowed to have up to 10 animals. But that's it. Ten an animals of a sort. And I don't even know what my strategy is going to be right away. So, instead, I'm going to go with slaves. Why? Because it kind of has a romanticized idea that, you know, we all uh, survived in a, you know, uh, a rebellion or something, you know. We were in a slaver ship and we crashed. I could edit out a scenario to fix that up right here because this is kind of a story-driven narrative story here, but... My gosh, I did not think about that until now. And on top of that, I think I'm going to have to change the tile from 100 people to 101 people. Because really, I don't want to lose. I don't want to make a 99. My OCD would refuse it. At least you'll see a 1 right here and a 1 on the other end. There, 101. That's a fact. <laughs> now to start with animals. Yay! Now I've got them bunch of mods on here that allow for several different things. Apparently I can get a spectral bat? I haven't heard of that. A spectral wolf too? What the heck? 
never heard of those, but then again, that's probably with the werewolf and uh, vampire mod. Jeez, I really should have studied those more. But that's kind of the fun here, because there are half of these mods that I have no idea how they work. Or really how to use them. I mean, most of them I have a descriptive idea of, but, you know, it's kind of vague for me. That's kind of the fun part, though. Knowledge with chaos. That's what I go for. Now, what I do know is most of the animals on this list, just not the bats. Or the spectral wolf. Or the monstrosity. Or mist, blood mist, abyssal, okay. Oh, the Zegazel is what I know, and that's something I need, actually. At least one of. You know, let's add two, because I can. Now, a lot of these different modded animals kind of give you a kind of advantage in some of the cases. You know, like the uh, boulder mate here, it can drop a lot of boulders, which if you're a person who likes getting a lot of stone made and cobbled out so you can make massive forts and all that stuff, or a base that's made completely out of stone, this would be the one for you, because it'll constantly produce stone for you, even though a lot of these maps have a lot of stone. The raptor shrimp, that's a vicious predator that also has an incredible ability of regenerating its injuries, you know? It can take a lot of hits and fix itself up really darn fast. The Terra Slug is great for your batteries. When you make batteries, uh, it'll, uh, when it's near the batteries, will re help recharge them. Even if they're not connected to any power source. Now, isn't that a slap on the knee? And so on and so forth. I also got Oni because... I like fantasy creatures, and these Onis are awesome, but I need something that'll help me, because wherever I'm going to go, the first thing that I'm going to need to prioritize is food. So either your animals have to be really good defensive-wise, they have to be really good, uh, you know, helper-wise or sanity-wise to help keep your people calm, or they're going to have to be really good at providing food, whether they produce the food or they become the food. In my case, I want to go for the Slurpede. Now you're probably wondering, what is a Slurpede? Well, I'm going to show you in a very short minute. Because Slurpedes are awesome! They provide nutrient paste, for crying out loud. And the reason why I like them so much is, well, you'll see why in a minute. Now, I got to choose one of these factors. Now, since this is a beginning scenario and I don't want to over abuse myself like I already am, I'm gonna go for medium. That is tolerable, both for my pride and also for, you know, everyone watching. Because if I go on peaceful or builder, that is a wimp's way of playing. I just can't stand that. And I gotta do the reload anytime mode because, well, I'm probably gonna need it for at least one time. Yana, how about we go for. Okay. And see how that that goes. I have no idea what this is gonna do, but then again, they kind of don't do much really for me. I one map it turns into one thing or another. Usually, kind of generic. Unless you pay really close attention, which I don't. Now, there's lots of temperate forces here, and uh, you can see a lot of these factions, including the slavers. Those are bad doo-doo. Now, obviously, I want to go somewhere where I can get a lot of food. I kind of want to go to a desert, though. Because the weather will be good there just about all the time. Except for the extensive heat. Which, in retrospect, would actually be pretty bad for a large colony like mine. But I don't want to go to a temperate forest either as much. But I think I don't have much of a choice at this point. So, I'm going to choose a beach line. Why? Because I've grown accustomed to liking the beach more. Wait, what? Oh no, I forgot! I forgot something! Okay, time to go back real quick. New arrivals. I want to go with Synthetic Dawn, okay? There. Now we're good. And good thing I remember my seed. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but, oh my gosh, this is exactly the same! Huh, I did not know that was a thing. Now this is better! Now as you can see, they look like dolls, don't they? These are supposed to be synthetic people, which I'm imagining are just like big old stuffed people. 
but with beating organs. Now, what character kind of suits the profile here? Uh, who would be a deemable leader? Now, to look at the traits, which one of you will be the winner? A quick sleeper and steadfast, huh? You got a scratch on your right arm, and you're in exile. <laughs> you know, I can't help but think about her being in a political situation and going, no more! Oh wait, she was, because she was vat grown. Well, wait, they're all vat grown. That's stupid of me. But then again, we're on this planet. Of course we had to go through some kind of rebel uh, rebellion or something like that. You know, that's kind of a, a candidate right there. I like that. I like that. Living art piece. Slothful, nudist, and fast walker. The nudist would actually be a good thing because when you're playing a game like this, you are actually happy to see nudists. You know why? Because they don't mind not having clothing. And that's a good thing when you're starting in this scenario. Tape. Or tap. Tip. Tape? No, it must be tap. Tappy? I'm not sure I can go anywhere with that. He isn't too bad, though. He's beautiful and an undergrounder. Which means he can be beautiful while posing inside a cave. Kind of an awkward picture there, but hey. Oh, this guy's pretty too. And he's gourmet, which means he's a chef. Just look at that hairstyle. He's got the punk rocker look going for him, and the stats are really good, actually. He's an interstellar contractor. Oh, he has talent. While looking at her and him, there is actually quite a sizable difference. Even though they look exactly the same color-wise. I mean, she has yellow hair, he has yellow hair. She's blue, he's blue. They are both depressing individuals. Except one's actually making a name for himself. Except if I choose him for the scenario, so maybe it's a good idea to let him go free. Annoying voice, kind and garmy. Uh, Gormand. Uh, well. That sister. Oh, he had a vat sister. That's cool. I didn't know that's a thing with these guys. These are fairly new for me, too. I kind of want to try them out because I know they don't just naturally spawn on the map. So, I gotta give them a try. Water Purity Enforcer. Huh. You wouldn't expect that he was an enforcer with that look. I can only imagine what he was like as a police officer. <clears throat> May I see your license and registration? Thank you. Now hold still while I go and check up on your resume. <laughs> Is that doing it justice? I, I know, it, it just doesn't work for a pink guy, but that's the point. She has an annoying voice and a body purist. A body purist is actually pretty good because they are not going to take drugs or anything. Bad thing is, when they get a disease, they don't want drugs then either. Basically, they are willing to die for their belief. That's commendable. That's commendable. But here, we have to make sacrifices. Holy cow, she's 103 years old too. Jeez, she's old. I thought I was feeling old. Jeez, she's 101. HOLY COW! She is 114?! You don't look a day over a hundred. No, 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 that's, that's a terrible pickup line. This is why I'll never get a date. Well, I did all my choices, and while I could press randomize, I don't think that's very right for this traditional thing, you know, for a first try. So, I think I'll go go with her. She has next to no good stats, but... Maybe I can change one thing about that. Go with the prefer carefully, mo Oh, wait. Apparently, I can't do that without changing her color. I don't want to change her color, because she is unique the way she is. Nah, heck with it. I'll just make her a good medic. She is going to be the leader of this new place. Hopefully, she will not die horribly. Okay. Whew. This is it. This is our moment, people. Let us see where we go. What kind of people will we see? What kind of individuals will we run into? Who are all the colonists we will be with? Well, we won't know because it'll actually be a really random mishmash, and that's the fun part. Man, this is taking forever. Oh, yes, I, I went through a major surgery. It was supposed to be a simple process, but, man, not only did I... Uh, 
land in a pod while being naked, but I land in a pod while being naked to a bunch of a bunch of other individuals. Vampire settings, huh? Well, this is interesting. Events only, standard, I don't know. Okay, the chance of another character you encounter having vampirism is 5%, and the lowest generating vampire active outside of event is 7th generation. Custom, set the vampire spawn rate and lowest vampire generation. You know, I'm gonna put on standard. That way I can run into a vampire at a standard time. Well, not really standard, 5% chance. Holy moly! Now, I'm gonna pause just for this time to give you a good picture of what I've got here. See these? These are what I love! You know, I always loved bugs as a child. And I also liked robots. So what is a child's ultimate fantasy? A robotic bug that spits out food! Yes! That's right. These things will create food. Their their background is that they are supposed to be uh uh a mechanoid uh, hybrids to help uh, feed the prisoners, the few prisoners they get. Oh my gosh, this is a jungle biome. I just realized that. Oh shoot. Now what I like doing recently is actually setting up shop right at the ocean shore. Cause one thing, you can kind of build a Fort Knox kind of deal around the place. Or rather, like an Alamo, you know, last stand kind of deal. Now, as you can see, I've got horse people. I've got regular people. More horse people. I've got snake people, which are Nagas. Or Naga. Oh, confusion. Uh-oh. Someone has dementia. Oh, it's one of the horses. Oh, great. There are other races that also appear, too. Uh, for example... Celestians or Celestians or whatever they are. They're f basically fox people. And usually I have one, two, or three of them. And oh, here's a crystal person. A Valkyrie, I think. Let's see, a Valkyrie? Yes, a Valkyrie! They're supposed to be rare! It's awesome when you get them. Yeah, there's one! There's one of the furry fox people. And it's a girl, too. There's my character right there. Yep. Cutting a tree. Efficiently too. Now I need to get mining going. Because without metal, I'm going to be in trouble. Especially with what I need to do. I need to create a nutrient paste dispenser. Because with this many people, despite being in a jungle like this, it is going to be a disaster to try and feed these people. So I need to build a paste dispenser right away. And thankfully, there seems to be a structure right here which I can take advantage of. Oh, yes. And do you see that beehive right there? That's also another mod on here. You can raise honeybees and hybridize them. I've only gone so far as to just make the regular hybrids. That's it. I don't know how well this will go, though. Hopefully not bad, because I'd hate to lose people this early on. Oh, speaking of which, I gotta give these people the ability to defend themselves. That's one of the things you gotta make sure of when you do this kind of run. You gotta make sure that everyone can take care of themselves. Or at least everyone who is not a pacifist. And this is also a good way of telling a pacifist, for example, REJECT RIGHT HERE! <laughs> He's a pacifist! I wonder why your parents named you so lovingly. And this way, when a social fight starts, they'll be able to fight back and everyone around them will be able to gang up on that poor person and beat them to death, if necessary. Unfortunately, if a person dies in a colony, it's kind of a uh, negative on you. But at the same time, it's not the worst thing that can happen. Oh, I probably should check among these people to see if any of them are werewolf children now that I think about it. Because it would be really bad if there is a werewolf child among us and a full moon comes. Oh, speaking of it's the full moon counter. Well, you know, there is one. Adding to the fun and the chaos. For five and six and seven. Why am I doing this? Because I need to make bows. Because right now we gotta start with the most primitive methods possible. Which can be pretty deadly. But I can't make a bunker. 
at an early stage like this, it's kind of interesting how you can learn how to make a bunker so quickly. An ancient danger, built with wax, beeswax to be exact. Ooh, we tamed one, awesome. Oh. You broke down into sadness. I am so sorry about that. Well, if it makes you feel any better, things aren't going to get better yet. They're going to get worse before they get better. If they ever do. Oh, speaker, which time to build a paste dispenser. Production. Nutrient paste. New lovers. Oh, awesome. We got people that are, you know, loving on each other. Then we gotta build a power source and structure. A wood filled generator will work perfectly for this. And we also want us to make it to where people can eat at a table too. I'm getting ahead of the game here, although I'm probably forgetting something. Why am I building this spaced out so that people have room to walk around? I, you know how it is when you're in a dining hall, right? Uh, think of like the lunch cafeteria, you know? If it's really full and claustrophobic. You want to have as much room as possible. Oh. A Vox? Is hunting Doc for food? What? Are you serious? That little critter is after one of my people? Well, that's easy food! I thought they were supposed to be social. That's what the mod said, and so is their description. There we go, we got food. Hunt the little bugger. Okay, make sure that no one eats those. Because we kind of need them. It's hard when you can't pause. Because you always want to pause and kind of take a look at everything to evaluate everything. And go, oh, you probably need to do this. Oh, we need to do that. But no, no, I'm not allowed to do that. That's, it's just against the code right now. That's going against the... Jeez, this is gonna be one heck of a dining area, that's for sure. Oh man, I, I've been spending more time preparing chairs than I have been getting people beds. I am very concentrated right now. Oh no, someone gave up. I hope it's not one of the romantic people. Are you worth keeping? Oh, he's a wimp. You know what? Go ahead. Leave. Like I care. Leave your friends behind. Okay, you're a lover of who? You're a female. So, let's see. Social. Well. Um. You know, those kind of relationships actually normal on the rim, you know? Uh, it, it can get lonely out here. <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna judge, man. I mean, this is a whole new frontier, you know? I'm hoping this is enough beds. The reason why I do double beds is so I can kind of get an evaluation on anyone who is a couple. Because sometimes you'll actually end up with several couples, you know, whether they are married or separated. The Val... The entrance of horseshoes. A box. Another one. Oh, it's the same one. Dang, damn it. Go away. Oh, wait. New lovers? Holy cow. No. Wait, wait, what? What? Wait, what? Blood. Aw. They are so cute together. But uh, I'm still wondering. Uh, Oh, the blood meter is just another thing. Okay. Whew. I was I was getting worried. It's like, wait a minute, is he a vampire? Do I need to worry about him uh, drinking uh, other people's blood? If so, that would be a problem because we cannot turn cannibalistic yet. It would not go well for our resume as a new colony. Man, with all the damage that's going on here, I wouldn't be surprised if we have no furniture in the morning. Apparently, I did not set up enough beds, either. Oh, well. I'm looking for someone who has the... That's new music for me! I also installed another mod for music. 
I only heard a couple of clips, but I liked what I was hearing. I figured it'd add a new zest to it. Sure enough, it does the trick for me. Oh, this is the most tedious part of this whole thing. Going through each person. Checking out their weaknesses and their strengths. And now, making sure now that I'm gonna turn werewolf on the full moon. I'm looking for someone who, is called, who goes by werewolf child. Or something like that. A lot of these people are vat grown. Jeez, how many people can you grow in a vat? I guess in Glitter World, a lot of developments have happened. I mean, they are so up and tight about themselves and terrified of having kids that they decide, hey, why don't we clone people? That won't go wrong for us at all. Jason took me the whole night to look through all these people. This can kind of get to one's head after a while. Of course, the one uh, furball we have is a night owl, but hey, at least that's an easy one to identify. Usually most of the Celestians are, uh, you know, night owls. Vat grown failure? What the heck? Something went horribly wrong. Yeah, he became a slothful, pessimistic kid that was too smart for his own good. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was able to think for himself. Yeah, just about all these are that grown. Hey, don't need to worry too much about it. Huh. Her, star her father was a starfighter. That was cool. Okay, so it looks like there is absolutely no one with the uh, trait of wolf child, which means none of them will go werewolf right away. But it doesn't mean that event won't happen that will cause werewolves to happen. Uh, someone please repair the furniture. We have enough components to make a fridge soon too. I need someone to make that. Uh, uh. I need someone to start working on it. Uh, stop breaking stuff, please! It takes a lot of work to do this in the first place. Stop undoing everything. You're slowing our progress down, dang it! I'm hoping that I can get more couples going here because the more couples there are, the less beds I have to make and the less rooms I have to make too. It's almost done. It's almost done. Hallelujah! It's done. Now people will be able to finally do what they need to. Woo! This music is kicking a beat. Haha! All the counts already been 30 minutes. 38 minutes, actually. Dang, damn it. Jeez, those bears are going fast, that's for sure. Supply and demand, that's what the people want. Woo! Okay, I think right after this will be a good time to stop. But anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope this is a, a really entertaining episode. I'm having a lot of fun right now because I'm kind of shaking things up a little bit. Oh man, this music is wonderful. My word. I need to find the list on where all this music came from. And download it. Oh, stop that. You're killing chairs before they're even born into this world, you psycho. Well, at least this will help build up all their abilities to construct things more thoroughly. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Be free. Be creative. Be open-minded. I'm Good Fedora Fella, signing out. Toodaloo!